are enrolled in a statistics course. And so it's important that we understand what I mean by that word statistics. Because the word statistics can take on three different meanings. When I say statistics, I could be referring to the practices of statistics. I could be referring to the procedures of statistics, or I could be referring to the products of statistical research. Let's start with the practice of statistics. Here are three definitions for the word statistics. Number one, the art and science of making sense of data. Now, this is one of my favorite definitions for statistics, art and science, because it's not just about the math. It is about understanding what the numbers are revealing. Many times when we study statistics, we think we need to have statistically significant results in order to get published. Turns out that is not the case if you do the analysis correctly. Sometimes non-significant results can be just as informative as statistically significant results. The art and science of understanding statistical analysis is what gets us to that point of being able to do statistics well. A second definition of statistics that I particularly like is this. Statistics is the point at which common sense meets logic, where numbers convey ideas. That you can look at a table of numbers and have an emotional experience because of what you see revealed within those numbers. The great author and philosopher Bertrand Russell is credited with saying, the mark of a civilized man, we might read that as the mark of a civilized person, is the capacity to read a column of numbers and weep. Now this quote is probably apocryphal. Russell probably did not actually say that, but that idea is still true. That you could look at a table, a graph, and see revealed in that something emotionally profound. I like those first two definitions because of the, the artistry woven through them. But the definition that our textbook uses is this. Statistics is a field that uses math plus logic to organize, analyze, and interpret data. A second potential meaning of the word statistics would refer to the procedures of statistics. There are two basic procedures that we'll be learning and using in this course. And the first is descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics is exactly what it says on the tin. We are describing numbers, describing the central features of those numbers, creating pictures and tables of those numbers, descriptive statistics. But then we want to learn from those data. We want to make an educated guess about what is being revealed. That educated guess is called inferential statistics. And with inferential statistics, we are using data to make decisions. Most often about whether a particular sample well represents the population from which it was drawn. So let me dig a little deeper into what I mean by descriptive and inferential statistics. Let's start with descriptive statistics. The procedure of descriptive statistics organizes and summarizes a large amount of data in an abbreviated symbolic form. I am going to be giving you data sets as part of this course. And some of those data sets will be huge. 4,000 lines of information in a particular data set. And you don't want to write out every single element in that data set. What you want to be able to do is tell me a typical score, like an average. That would be an example of summarizing a large amount of data into a single number. We use inferential statistics, however, to examine those descriptives and make an educated guess about what they are telling us. Inferential statistics are procedures to draw conclusions about data, making inferences or predictions about unknown values. An inference is a conclusion reached on the basis of evidence and reasoning. A third potential meaning of the word statistics could be the products of statistics. The numbers, the tables, the charts, the graphs. And so let me explain 
what we will be doing with these descriptive and inferential statistics, how we're going to work within the field of statistics, and how we are going to bring all of those pieces together. As I've said before, we don't necessarily want to know about the, that small group, that sample that we're measuring. Instead, we want to know about the large group. That large group is called a population. It is the entire group about which we want to know something. We will pick or we will randomly sample individuals from that population in a procedure called sampling. That sample will be collected and will become this subset of the population that will tell us something about the group as a whole. Now, any sample drawn from a population should be very similar to the population from which it was drawn. What is true of the population should be true of the sample. And working the other direction, what is true of the sample should be true of the population. Because we don't have access to the entire population, we're going to take what we learn from the sample and apply it back to the population from which it was drawn. We are then going to calculate descriptive statistics for our sample. Statistics like the mean and the standard deviation, showing us the central feature and how spread out the scores are. Those descriptive statistics are going to be written in a very specific way, and that writing will differ depending on whether we're talking about a sample or a population. With a sample, you will see the, des the descriptive statistics written in English letters, such as X bar for the mean. We will use the mean of the sample to make an inference about the population mean, a population mean that is represented by the Greek letter mu. In fact, every descriptive statistic that we use will have an analog in the sample and in the population. So for instance, the mean of the sample will be written as X bar. The mean of the population is written as mu, which is the Greek letter for M. The standard deviation will be S in the sample, but the Greek letter sigma for the population. The size, sample size or number of individuals in the sample will be lowercase n for the sample and uppercase n for the population. What I am describing to you are statistics and parameters. Statistics are numbers that characterize the scores in a sample. Parameters are the values calculated based on the population. The mean of a sample is a statistic. The mean of the population is a parameter. The statistics tend to be written using English letters, whereas parameters tend to use Greek letters. As I said earlier, what is true of the population should be true of any sample drawn from that population. What is true about a sample should be true about the population from which it was drawn. Therefore, we will use statistics like the mean of the sample as a point estimator of the corresponding population parameter. If the sample mean is 50, we would say that the population mean should likewise also be 50. The field of statistics is about understanding the world through numbers. Therefore, it's important to understand how numbers are used. Numbers can do three jobs, and we're going to explore what those jobs are in our next video.